What if I told you this is what space sounds like? In my last video on sound in space, I mentioned that sound propagates by colliding particles, kind of like billiard balls. You should really go back and rewatch that video before we continue. There's a link at the top of the description or just click here. Go on, I'll, I'll wait. It'll be a lot easier to understand this video if you watch that one first. Okay? All caught up? I know! A super massive black hole radiating a cosmic B flat? So sound can travel through space if it's low enough frequency. The long wavelengths stretch out over the light years so that particles can collide, and sound can indeed travel. But this is not low frequency. In fact, it's pretty high for the range of human hearing. I'm gonna to try to blow your mind here. These frequencies actually travel through our solar system all the time. But you said sound can- I know, I know, but this really isn't sound. I mean, like I said before, sound involves the collision of particles. This involves the interaction of ions. Ion is just a fancy science word for ordinary atoms and molecules that carry a charge. And most of the individual particles flying around our solar system are a collection of hydrogen nuclei, protons, and electrons. Together, they make up the neutrally charged hydrogen atom, but flying around our solar system, they aren't complete hydrogen atoms. They're positively charged protons, and negatively charged electrons, ions. Now, charged objects can interact over greater distances. They don't have to touch each other to affect each other. An ion doesn't have to travel the distance of the mean free path to interact with another by colliding into it. A charged particle can interact with any other nearby ion. And this makes our shortest wavelength that space will carry much smaller. The frequencies of Ionic sound can be much higher. It's not really sound, but it kind of is. This is an actual recording of Jupiter's moon Io that Voyager 1 took from space. And here's one from the Cassini mission. And here's the one I played at the beginning of the video. Recordings from space. Okay, okay, so if you go to space, you take off your helmet, and you listen. That is a terrible idea, why would you do that? So if you go into space, hold out a microphone and listen, you will hear nothing. You'll hear none of this, none of this, and none of this. This ionic sound is so quiet that there aren't enough particles for even our most sensitive microphones to pick this sound up. Okay, then how did Voyager, Cassini, and other spacecraft record these? sounds. Are these air quotes getting old yet? When a particle moves, it creates a changing magnetic field, and this changing magnetic field causes the particles nearby to move. This, by the way, is how ions can interact without actually colliding. This is also true for the electrons in antennae. In fact, this is how antennae work, either from the changing magnetic field of moving ions or the changing magnetic field from radio waves. The electrons in the antenna move back and forth and produce both the signal that is the music you used to listen to before the internet and this ionic sound picked up by Voyager 1. If you want to hear more sounds of our solar system, and you want to hear more sounds of our solar system, uh, check out this channel, Space Audio, hosted by the University of Iowa. You can click here or the second link in the description, or just go to spaceaudio.org. Researchers at Iowa have been putting their space recordings on YouTube so anyone can listen to amazing things like solar wind, Jupiter's magnetosphere, lightning on Saturn, and the edge of the solar system itself. Thanks for watching this episode of Acoustics. You can follow me on your favorite social networking platform. Be sure to subscribe and keep getting excited about sound. Mm.